The Great Little Engine Show. One morning, the fat controller got an important phone call. He rushed outside to tell Percy, There's a railway show for little engines today. I need you to take some important items for it to Olstead Castle later today. Percy was thrilled. Just imagine a railway show especially for little engines, sighed Percy. As Percy went about his day, he told every little engine he saw all about the show. The show is being held at Olstead Castle. It's for little engines, just like us. I hope you can all make it there, said Percy to the Arlesdale Railway engines. News of the little engine show quickly spread, and soon all the little engines were excited about it, and started heading to Olstead Castle. But then there was trouble. With all the little engines away, no one was around to do their jobs. Work stopped at the quarry. Bertie had to pick up Thomas's passengers. And there was no one to bring Henry or Gordon their coaches. Where is that silly little engine with my coaches? Huffed Gordon. The fat controller soon realised what had happened and asked Gordon to take him to Olstead Castle. At Olstead, so many little engines were trying to get into the show that there was a queue all the way down the track. What's the holder? And what time does the show start? Said the engines. Inside, the Sodor controllers told the engines there had been a mix-up. I think you misunderstood what was meant by little engines, Percy. It's a model engine show, said the fat controller. The controllers agreed that the engines could still be a part of the show, as long as they got their jobs done. The little engines had a great time at the show, and lots of people enjoyed the chance to see real railway engines. Percy was even happier when a model of himself won first prize. Can you answer three questions about the story you just heard? Question 1. Who told Percy about the railway show? Was it the Earl Sir Robert Norrenby? Or was it the Fat Controller? Yes, it was the Fat Controller who told Percy about the railway show. Question 2. Who had to pick up Thomas's passengers? Was it Bertie? Or was it Harold? You're good at this. Bertie the bus had to pick up Thomas's passengers. Question 3. Where was the railway show happening? Was it at the Steamworks? Or was it at Olstead Castle? Well done! The railway show was taking place at Olmstead Castle, where the Earl of Sodor lives. Now it's time for a special story about the time Thomas and the Fat Controller took a trip to London. The Royal Engine The Fat Controller had been invited to London to meet the Queen of England. The young prince had specially asked for Thomas to go too. The next morning Thomas had a special wash, so he would be extra clean to meet the Queen. Once the Fat Controller was ready, he climbed aboard his coach and they set off for London. As Thomas hurried on his way, a big engine whooshed past and splashed him with mud. Thomas's perfect paint was very dirty. And the Fat Controller had his window open, so he got covered in mud too. At the next station, the Fat Controller went to clean himself up, and Thomas headed to the washdown. The washdown had run out of water, so Thomas's fireman went to call ahead to make sure the next washdown would be ready. While he was gone, the Fat Controller came back and said they were late and should leave immediately. 
They left without Thomas's fireman, which meant his driver had to shovel coal and drive at the same time. When the fat controller realised what had happened, he decided to be Thomas's fireman for the rest of the journey and got to work shoveling. Further down the line, Thomas met the big engine that had splashed him. Her name was Duchess and her safety valve had broken. She had some very important passengers she was taking to London. Thomas offered to push Duchess all the way to London. It was very tiring, but Thomas was a strong little engine and soon they had arrived. Duchess was very thankful for the rescue. Thomas pushed her onto her platform, then went to his. Thomas and the Fat Controller had made it on time, but both of them were a big mess. Just then, the Fat Controller noticed the golden crown on the front of Duchess, and the cheering crowds waiting on the platform. He realised the train they had pushed all the way to London was the Royal Train. The very important passengers aboard Duchess's carriage were the Queen and the young Prince themselves. They were both very thankful that Thomas and the Fat Controller had saved them from being stuck. The Queen gave the Fat Controller his award and the young Prince gave Thomas a special medal. The End Look very closely at these two pictures from the Great Little Railway Show. They look very similar, don't they? But there are seven differences in picture B. How many can you spot? If you need more time, just pause the video here. Let's have a look at all the differences. How many did you get right? Well done. Now it's time for one more story. Three Steam Engines Gruff One autumn day Thomas was chugging along his branch line when he noticed one of Farmer McCall's fences was broken. He looked out to see if any animals had escaped onto the tracks, but he couldn't spot any. He told the farmer and carried on with his jobs. That evening, Thomas told the rest of the engines at Tidmouth Sheds all about the fence. Percy was worried. Who broke that fence? Or what broke that fence? It could have been anything, he said. None of the other engines were worried, but they could all stay in the sheds. Percy had to pull the mail train that night. Percy had frightened himself, so when he passed over a little bridge and heard a strange noise, he panicked. He rushed back to Tidmouth and woke all the other engines up by shouting, I heard something v v very spooky out on Thomas's branch line. The next day, Percy, Thomas and Toby crossed over the bridge and this time they all heard the noise. It must be a troll, said Percy. A troll, replied Thomas. Trolls live under bridges. Don't you remember the three billy goats gruff, said Percy. In the fairy tale, three goats had to cross a bridge with a troll underneath it, and the third goat was the one who had to get rid of the troll. Percy and Toby were desperate not to be the third back over the bridge, so they shot off. Thomas was third and as he got closer to the bridge again, he started to feel worried. Percy and Toby had already crossed and were waiting for Thomas. As he was crossing, Thomas heard the noise again. But this time, it sounded more like a moo. One of Farmer McCall's cows had broken the fence and gotten stuck under the bridge, and its mooing was what scared Percy and Toby. The farmer arrived to rescue his cow, and later that night, all the engines had a good laugh when they heard the story. It's not funny, it was really scary, said Percy. Well, it is a little amusing, laughed Thomas. Night, night.
If you liked these stories, please consider leaving a like rating down below as well as commenting and subscribing.